Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pit Mailbag Show here from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. We're your hosts, Chris Carter and Stephen Thompson, your Pit Beat writers here from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Read all of our work at post-gazette.com and find this show every Tuesday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of our weekly episodes of this as well as the Monday, Wednesday, Friday shows of the North Shore Drive podcast hosted by George Truly and the daily content that comes out from all of our sports writers here at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Stephen! We we only got I think what this week next week and then training camp be- begins. It's crazy to think things are already getting ready heating up for college football season. It is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, we started to roll out our uh, season preview stuff uh, this week. You you put together a nice piece on the safeties, a really deep position group for Pitt. I'm headed down to ACC kickoff next weekend. It's Char- or next week, excuse me, in Charlotte. It really feels like it's here. It's uh, summer went by way too fast. I think, in my opinion. It, it it always does. I'd like more vacation time if you ask me. <laughs> but let's get into a few things here. If you want to check out our positional previews, we're doing one every day, Monday through Friday, over the next two the next two weeks. I started off with safeties. So if you want to go check that out, that's ready. That, that's ready to go there. Monday, Stephen will have another group tomorrow and we'll be switching on and off throughout the rest of the week. So do check that out there. But Let's start with the position here as a, because we did have a question and we will talk about the quarterbacks in more depth in this uh, in this preview um, in, in this preview series. But let's talk about the quarterback position. That's what Aiden wants to do, because Aiden asks, where should Nate Yarnell rank among ACC quarterbacks going into the season? And Stephen, this is a tough uh, this is a tough situation to kind of gauge because Nate Yarnell only played a little bit last year and Pip had the worst offense in the ACC last season, uh, and pro- no- notably because they had poor quarterback play and poor offensive line play all last season. And there's a lot of different things. Now, Nate Yarnell did you know, show some promise at times, uh, either, especially with the way he, he was able to come in at the end of the season and he was able to make some plays. But you look around and you see how other people are ranking this conference, and Nate Yarnell's towards the bottom of these lists. Some people even ranking Eli Holstein, the new transfer out of Alabama, over him. Uh, I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I think Nate Yarnell has potential here and could end up being one of the one of the more decent quarterbacks in the ACC. What do you see as his potential in the, in this conference? Yeah, I, I think you're spot on. A lot, not a lot of people are paying ten, paying attention to Nate Yarnell. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to Pitt in general. But you know, there seems to be some people who still think that there's a quarterback competition going on. I don't think that's true. I think Nate Yarnell has that pretty locked up, uh, at least going into the start of the regular season. Um, with that said, you're you're right. He is kind of an unproven guy. Um, even though he did stabilize things for Pitt at the end of the year last year, it was um, a pretty low bar to clear to stabilize things. I guess he was the most competent quarterback in a room full of not very good quarterbacks um, last year. So, um, you know, there's something to be said for that. But I mean, you think about Cal coming into the league. You think about Stanford coming into the league. Those are two teams that. Struggled pretty mightily uh, last year. I mean, Virginia's bringing back uh, uh, Anthony Calandria and uh, Tony Musket, who both showed some flashes for them. I, I would say that Nate Yarnell's floor uh, is a lot higher than those guys. Um, and so I would put him, you know, not last, like a lot of, um, you know, dead last in the conference, you know, number 17, like a lot of places seem to be having Pitt's quarterback situation ranked. But um, I, I think he's closer to maybe – 13th or 12th maybe Mm -hmm. um you know there's some intriguing quarterbacks in the acc i think you know malik murphy at duke is really interesting i think max johnson at unc could be something kyle mccord at syracuse those guys are interesting as well but i think there's very little to say that those guys are definitively better than than nate yarnell i don't think he's going to be able to rise to the level of a cam ward maybe even a cade klubnik this year at least in terms of, of national perception as well but uh, he's better than last in the ACC. I'm pretty confident about that. Uh, if for nothing else, than because he takes care of the ball, he makes good decisions, and he is very, very accurate when he has played. I think the only knock you can have against him is that he hasn't played a whole lot of football. I think that's the whole thing here is that it's the unknown, and he's going to be in a new system. So it's kind of like there's a lot of things just stacked up against Nate Yarnell to prove himself as one of the better quarterbacks in the ACC. Um, I also think it's interesting, you know, we've seen Nate Yarnell perform well before me you know, in, in very limited fashion. Uh, but when he helped them beat, was it Western Michigan uh, just, just a few years ago uh, when he filled in uh, because Keaton Slovis got hurt 
Uh, and then he filled in this past year and he gave there was some hope there. And I think that that's the whole thing is that Pitt needs a quarterback that will keep them on schedule. And they didn't have that last year in Phil Dracovic. And they had a moment of that with Christian Bayer. But I think that was the thing that Nate Yarnell really showed the best part of his game was it wasn't the arm strength. It wasn't just the accuracy, although I think he was a pretty accurate thrower. It was how he understood the system and how he needed to work with it. And we've seen him, we've ta- we've ta- we've heard from him, you know, kind of put a lot on him to try to be the quarterback that can do that. And he thinks he needs to be better than he has been. Cade Bell's working with, with him. I-, I think that that's going to be a big crux of how this season goes is how well does Nate Yarnell fit into the system? How well does he kind of play into the timing of things to get guys, hit guys in open space? And that could very well be a big part of does the, does the do the Panthers bounce back from a three and nine season to get back into the winning category and you know get back into bowl game you know type seasons or does this continue in a spiral out of control uh, after what was a terrible season last year? Yeah, um, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, if this if this offensive system is what we've been told that is, if um, a lot of these playmakers are as good as we're being told that they are, Nate's job is relatively easy. It's just kind of put the ball in the right spot and let your playmakers do the work for you. Um, so Nate's job should be relatively easy. It shouldn't, you know, be a Herculean effort for him to kind of raise the profile of this team. And um, like you said, I think coming off of last year, the expectations are not necessarily that high. And I think the uh, what's necessary for this team to kind of climb out of that three and nine hole is not particularly difficult. Um, you've just got to be somewhat mildly competent on offense as opposed to a really, really bad on offense. And I think Nate Yarnell is more than capable of getting them there. So as long as they are not the worst in the conference, that is yeah. improvement. I think that is the that is the bottom line there. Let's talk, though, about other rate ratings when it comes to Pitt, and that comes to football, to college football ratings on the new college football 25 game. Okay, real question. Well, I, I, real question. First, let's get to Doug's question, who, who sent their question, so we'll get to their question. How does Pitt football stack up in the new EA Sports game, college football 25? Steven, you're younger than me, so obviously you've bought the game already, and you've probably played it for 24 hours straight since it's been out or something like that. So have you already figured out any cheat codes? Is there anything that you need to tell people about for this game? No, I actually have not played it yet. Um, I did not get any kind of exclusive access, unfortunately. I'm pretty oh, sad about that. But What good are uh, you? Exactly. You know, what good is having a guy like me around if I can't do that for you? Um, but, yeah, no, I I think P- I saw Pitt's rating got released uh, a little bit early. Someone kind of teased it on Twitter earlier. Uh, Pitt's a, an 80 overall team. Um, they get – Uh, I believe a 76 rating for their offense, a 78 rating for the defense. And quite honestly, that seems really optimistic. Um, Yeah, that was, it was pretty generous in my book. I kind of expected Pitt to be much lower on the totem pole. Um, I, I, you know, these, these college, uh, these football game ratings, they're not always super accurate. They don't always align with uh, everything that you're going to actually see on the field this year. But um, I think that's kind of a pretty interesting, like sign of respect for Pitt, you know, especially on the defensive side. Um, like there's, I don't know. There's still some. There's still clearly some belief out there that Pitt has talent. That they uh, that their coaches are still pretty good. You know, despite everything that happened last year, it was much more of an optimistic rating than I possibly would have expected from from this video game, uh, especially on offense too. Like that's, I don't know, a 76 for a team that is almost you know completely turning over their system that was so abysmal last year that that people don't really know a whole lot about. I think it's really interesting that they got a, a rating that high. I did think that was interesting too, especially from the national perspective. When you see, you know, teams that don't do so well, you kind of haul back and you're like, uh, we're going to give them a lower rating here. We'll put them in like the low 70s to the high 60s. But the fact that Pitt didn't get that, I think, is a sign of en- encouragement, uh, maybe from, from that perspective. But at the end of the day, it's just sports, it's just video game rate ratings. They're going to change at some point. I, actually, I, I am interested to see do the do the ratings change like they do for Madden throughout the season. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't I haven't learned that yet. I also am not nearly up on, on as much up on video games as I used to be because your boy used to know all the all the ratings for all oh, yeah. the teams and everything. I was all about like, oh wait, this guy's this thing. But I, I do think it's going to be interesting to see who are the better players on Pitt's team. We've already seen. Uh, some highlights of people posting them of Rodney Hammond taking off for a long touchdown run. It's it's also really cool because this is the first version of this game where we actually see the players' names and likeness 
in the game. Like we before when we play, like when I was a kid, you know, uh, Kevin Barlow was a pit Panther and there was just this guy, number 32. You knew that was Kevin Barlow, except it just didn't say his name on it. Right. Exactly. And I feel like that's the cool part of this. I mean, a lot of the talk has been about like the actual gameplay and like, you know, Oh, you can slide online line protection this way. You can add these kinds of playbooks in there and everything like that. But I feel like the coolest part of it all uh, is mostly just being able to like play as your team, you know, to play as the Pit yeah. Panthers, to be in Axure Stadium, to have that new blue and gold. That's the other thing. It's the first time this game yeah. has been released since the new colors and the new uniforms are out there. Um, I think that's all really cool. And I think that's kind of the best part of it is being able to kind of like, I don't know, live out this kind of dream or whatever of controlling this college football team or whatever. It's just not something we've seen before at all. And, you know, the, the most I, like – we've released they uh ea releases all like the top teams or whatever the highest rated mm. teams who's the best in the game but i, I saw everyone saying i don't really care who the best teams are you, no you know who the worst teams are let me know who i can you know yeah. build up from you know cellar dweller to college football playoff contender that's i think going to be the most fun part of it so being able to raise pit to you know in your dynasty mode or whatever to you know become the greatest team and you know win three national championships in a row or whatever like that i think that's going to be the most fun part of it that, that's it's gonna be a lot of fun i think for a lot of people i i'm eventually going to get it i i have to admit I'm, I'm kind of eager to see what this is like i'm also intrigued because they included so many traditions and we reported that here on the post gazette where mm-hmm. you know i was able to talk to branding people at pit who you know you know talk to them um and, and talk to these people uh from ea sports and gave them the turnover hoop you know, and they made sure to copy the exact background backboard of the turnover hoop so they can make sure that, that was accurate but like you go to other things I, I think it's really cool for like penn state fans uh because like when they when it's a whiteout game they will play uh they will play you know the, the lion king theme then they'll turn that into mo bamba and then if if you're doing well in your your stadium's packed it's so loud that if you try to look at your plays before you snap the ball, the play doesn't look clear because your players are in a loud environment. I'm like that kind of stuff that gets me. Cause then you're, you're finding ways to incorporate other environments of the, of the sport into a video game. All that's really cool. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, some people are having some fun there, but let's talk about some actual pit stuff here of uh, news that's going on. And this goes back to the summer league where we talked quite a bit here. Quentin asks, Bob Carrington looked impressive with Justin Champagne this weekend with a couple highlights, but how well did he really do? And this is always a question because, you know, summer league, summer league, it's not determining like, you know, how great any one player really is, but it's always good to see, how a player is doing and at least on friday uh bub carrington put up some really impressive numbers in fact he was very close to a triple double he had 19 points nine rebounds and eight assists very much kind of like what he was doing for pitt in the acc last season um steven what did you make uh, of uh, what bub carrington was able to show this week because they also played i believe sunday yeah um bubs looks really good through two games um really really impressive it doesn't look like uh, at least at this stage, you know, and like you said, summer league is summer league, but that the game is too fast for him um, or that, you know, he's having trouble keeping up with um, the intensity of the NBA and making that step up. I mean, at least among rookies at the summer league, uh, he uh, has the second most assists. He's second in points per game uh, and he's made the most threes of any rookie at NBA summer league so far mm. this year, which I think is the most impressive part. He's shooting yeah. 44% from three, um, which I know that was one of the, uh, one of the knocks against Bub coming out is his shooting was a little inconsistent in college. Was he going to be able to pick that up in the NBA? And he clearly has. Um, I think he has some room to grow in terms of uh, you know his ability to get to the basket, finish at the basket. I don't think his interior scoring um, inside the arc has been nearly as good as his shooting from outside. Um, but that was also something that I think people expected. Um, he's young. He's only 18 years old. He's got a bit of a wiry frame. Um, so he's going to be able to grow into that. Um, I don't think we're seeing – I think we've seen some encouraging things and, and anything that you might count as a negative against Bub in these first few games. It's kind of something that you expected to see already. Um, you know, it, we talked about Blake and Blake looked really good in his first game and then kind of has cooled off the past couple of games. It'll be interesting to see if Bub uh, can kind of keep this moving in the right direction. But for right now, there's a lot to be encouraged by. Um, he's keeping the turnovers down. He's passing the ball really well um, and he's shooting really well. And I feel like those are really the most important things for him at this juncture right now. And, and look, again, it's summer league. It's not to say that he's about to be an all-star or anything, but I do think, it's, like you said, it's encouraging to see these things from him. And, and part of it's also going to be, you know, can he 
Um, you know, can he do this when guys start using their size against him? Because he, well, you know, when I talked to him before the combine, he talked about how, like, even at the combine, you know, you know, trials and the games that they were that they were doing, guys were trying to use their size to intimidate him, and that's going to come, especially in the NBA, at some point sooner rather than later, because everyone's looking to to get a job. So um, that's coming for him. But at the same time, for this kind of a start. You know, that's a really good sign that he's handling things well. And who knows? Maybe we'll see him a lot sooner than we thought, uh, you know, playing a role for the Wizards in, in the in the coming weeks. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, OK, he's playing well in summer league right now. But once he gets out of summer league and really right. once he gets into the preseason, which, you know, you kind of don't realize for college guys, who gets drafted. I mean, you're basically playing nonstop basketball from, mm-hmm. you know, uh, let's call it November up until you know, the next, uh, the next June or April, depending on if you make the playoffs or not. Um, Mm -hmm. so how much is Bub going to kind of be able to keep up his stamina a little bit? He'll get a little bit of a break, you know, maybe about a month off before, you know, training camps and everything start like that. But, um, I'm interested to see, you know, are the wizards just going to throw him right into the fire right away? You know, are they going to, are they going to let him start? Are they going to let him play a lot of minutes because they don't really have a whole lot to lose, you know, like they are, they are motivated. They are, um, they have a, a vested interest getting him as much burn as possible. It's not like they're, you know, competing for a championship right away. So they can afford to let him kind of make some mistakes as well. I'm just really interested to see how he is, how Bob is able to kind of parlay uh, this impressive showing at summer league to start uh, into maybe bigger things uh, later on uh, in the preseason. And when he actually gets up to, to play in some other NBA guys. We'll be there to, to keep everything up with you guys throughout that process, as well as continue getting you ready for pit football training camp, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks here. We'll have all our previews laying out every day, Monday through Friday, bringing down a new position group between myself and Steven, giving you our insights on who the best player is, who's an up and un, up and comer talking about the new coaches. It's going to be a lot of breakdowns here, getting you ready for pit football training camp. Thanks again for tuning in to the pit mailbag show. Remember to send us your questions every week. If you want a chance to get on, get on the show, we're back next Tuesday, the final Tuesday before the official first week of training camp. We'll see you here on the Pit Mailbag Show from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Thank you for checking out this content from Post-Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post-Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.